Dr. Pearce. and can I just say, um, surprised that uh, the Minister is not here at the Chamber as we deal with this legislation. And can I point out, Chair, that it seems to be a trend. We had the Minister for a Public Expenditure who left uh, questions to the Minister of Public Expenditure uh, well before, with an hour, I think, left on question. We had last week the Minister for Finance refused to turn up for any of the stages of a serious piece of legislation and sent a junior minister who wasn't able to deal with committee stage, and now we have the senior minister not here um, in, in relation to this issue. So, can I welcome. Just, just to point out to you. The, the Tonnes should want to be able to have Texas legislation, but the capital meetings got changed because of the European meetings, and I think you're aware of that. I appreciate that. So I think that. it's a silly issue to be bringing up. No, it's not it's a silly issue. Response. With respect... This with schedule respect, was set last week, with, and you know with, this. With respect... No, to be... With, with respect... respect yes. The Minister for Public Expenditure left hit the questions to him yes. with, a, with about 30 changed. minutes into an hour and a half. The Minister changed. for Finance didn't turn up for yes. the second stage or committee or report yes. stage in relation to a piece of legislation and sent in a junior, and we had to suspend it all to get actually answers from an Official. Yeah, you do not treat the House like this, and if Michael Martin is calling know, cabinet you meetings, also know then he needs to look at the schedule of the House. But Chair, with respect, this is my time time acquisition. With he respect. knows that the Taoiseach has to attend cabinet meetings that were moved, that were, should have been on yesterday, Minister, but were moved in response I'm to the European. Pointing to a trend. So to be, Minister, I'm pointing to a trend. I am point point pointing to a trend where senior ministers have not have failed to turn up to deal with legislation and what was unprecedented where a senior minister for questions to that senior minister actually left after half an hour of 90 minutes of questioning. That hasn't happened in the past. It is a trend. It needs to stop right now. And you need to respect this House and you need to respect the representatives of the people who are sent here to ask questions and to participate in the passage of the legislation. And saying that, I do welcome the introduction of this bill before us. Because discussing the pre uh, before discussing the provisions of the bill, I wish to comment on the circumstances in which it has been brought before us and the challenges faced by our small businesses as a result of this crisis. It should always be borne that many of the challenges workers and SMEs face are a direct result of the public health measures implemented by government. That replaces a responsibility on government to act, to protect these jobs and to support these businesses. Public health measures have forced businesses to close throughout the state. It has required them to implement measures that have significantly reduced their capacity to operate. The losses experienced by SMEs now threaten their very survival and the jobs they provide. Employing more than a million people with extensive linkages throughout our domestic supply chain, our economic recovery depends on their very success. That means it will depend on the government's support. In the financial stability update published by the Central Bank in April, it was estimated that SMEs would require between 2.4 and 5.7 billion euro in additional liquidity and support to cover non-payroll expenses in the three months uh, alone. It cannot be denied at this stage that the supports provided by government uh, so far have fallen far below these needs. The numbers speak for themselves, Kyla. Since the 23rd of March, four months into the crisis, less than 300 million has been provided to businesses across all 15 schemes. Only a fraction of the liquidity support that the central bank had estimated that our SMEs needed. The restart grant has approved less than 75% of applications with an average grant of less than €4,200. This stands in stark contrast to what is happening in other jurisdictions. Just up the road in the north, grants of £10,000 sterling and £25,000 sterling have been provided to SMEs, depending on their size. These grants, with a total value of more than £300, sterling, uh, 300 million sterling, were dispersed to SMEs by the end of March, providing rapid liquidity to businesses that needed it uh, and the jobs that they supported uh, to help them survive. In contrast, the government's grant scheme here has been slow and inadequate, and this must change. Similarly, the government's credit guarantee scheme, which we're discussing here today in this legislation, has been so far an abject failure. In reply to a parliamentary question to myself on the 7th of July, the Minister confirmed that since the 23rd of March, a total number of five loans, five loans have been approved with a combined value of 1.6 million euro. This bill seeks to address this failure. 
It is clear among it is clear that among the supports provided to our SMEs during the crisis, affordable credit must play a part. The credit guarantee scheme was established in 2012 and amended in 2016 in order to facilitate lending and make credit accessible to small and medium-sized enterprises. Businesses who typically struggle to access credit from bank and non-bank lenders. Under the scheme, as it currently stands, the government would provide 80% guarantee of loans made to eligible businesses from a number of lenders. The purpose of the state guarantee was to cover the cost of the loans that may default under the scheme, thereby increasing the bank's willingness to lend and to provide credit to SMEs. However, with a portfolio cap of 13% in place, the effective guarantee provided on these loans has been reduced to 10.4%, and this has significantly reduced the willingness of banks to lend to SMEs. It is why the government's credit guarantee scheme has performed so badly so far, with negligible take-up from businesses and lending from banks involved. I understand that Minister Varadkar has a difficulty understanding what he has called regularly gobbledygook from the banks, but it's important that the Minister makes an effort to understand how they operate. The success of this scheme will depend on how it is operated by the banks. Section 4 amends Section 4 of the 2012 Act to give the Minister the powers to give guarantees in the context of the credit guarantee scheme. It also removes the portfolio cap from the scheme. This is welcome. On the 13th of May, I wrote to the Minister for Finance and your predecessor, the predecessor, uh, Minister Humphreys, proposing a suite of measures to support SMEs during the crisis. Among them was to amend the credit guarantee scheme to facilitate lendings to our SMEs. I propose that the portfolio cap be removed to facilitate lending and impose SME, uh, improve SME access to credit. In his response on the 29th of May, the Minister for, for Finance reiterated government policy of maintaining the portfolio cap of 50%, creating an effective guarantee of only 40%. As I make clear, such a low level of guarantee would fail to address the fundamental issues the unwillingness of lenders to provide credit to our SMEs. The only way to address this issue, as I made clear, was to remove the portfolio cap. And I welcome the fact that the Minister and the Government have changed their position and adopted Sinn Féin proposals in this regard. Section 4 just does that. Section 6 of the Bill ensures that the maximum liability of the Minister in relation to the credit guarantee scheme will be €1.6 billion. Euro. This relates to the 80% guarantee the state will provide to the $2 billion in lending under the scheme. It should be borne in mind that the cost of the state of this guarantee is likely to be much less, with a guarantee of 80% and a default rate likely to be about 20% on loans provided through the scheme. The cost of the state and the taxpayers would be about $320 million. I know the Minister has found it difficult <coughs> to understand how banks operate in the past, but this fact is worth bearing in mind when we consider this legislation. The cost of the state is much likely uh, to be much less than the $2 billion it would facilitate in lending, which is a good thing. For this very reason, Sinn Féin believe that the level of the guarantee should be increased to 90%, with a view of increasing it to a level of 100% depending on the performance of the scheme or the underperformance of the scheme. This would mirror other guarantee schemes established in EU jurisdictions, such as Germany among others. Assuming a default rate of 20%, this would cost the state €360 million, Euro, but it would increase the likelihood that banks would lend and credit would be provided to small businesses who need it, supporting jobs, maintaining jobs, retaining jobs, get people back to work. Sinn Féin won't oppose this legislation. Indeed, it adopts proposals Sinn Féin submitted to the Minister for Finance and Minister for Enterprise in May. But, I, but it can and must be strengthened by increasing the level of guarantee and, in, crucially, by ensuring zero interest with no repayments for the first 12 months for borrowers and where interest rates are capped at a maximum of 2.5% thereafter. While Sinn Féin will not oppose the bill, I would ask the Minister what guarantees he can give that these proposals will be incorporated into the credit guarantee scheme. I will finish by saying this, Akhairala, the Government's response to this crisis as it affects SMEs throughout the state has been slow and totally inadequate. It is my fear, and unfortunately it has come to pass, that the Government's lacklustre approach to date has cost jobs. And for that, this Government will be held to account. Neil Fiosa B got a heart, a ruddy mona dog and Fiosa ruddy the whole arty bugger. We are real to show Malik Dela Lish and Kesha, Agasner Dela Lish and Lish, Nero and Fish, Marish Garth and Chin. 
Mate na kolarti baga hon marshton, mate na pasne sha hon marshton, kahi mion agus fregre and realte sha erau agus kahi sha erau gugaste. Gormaigas.